Hey, what's going on there guys? You've officially arrived at the 420 scene and today we're gonna talk about the fastest way to get rid of heat stress. But first, show some love and support by watching the entire video, dropping a like, subscribing, and tapping the post notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Also be sure to join our VIP Patreon program for one-on-one -on -one grow help, tips, monthly giveaways, live streams, all that good stuff. Link will be in the description below. And also don't forget, if you wanna come and check out our grows and just chill with us, be sure to join us on our Discord link is going to be in the pinned message at the bottom here. So I figured out what are the two biggest ways why people have a problem with heat stress and it always falls under one of the two ways because that's how it always has fallen for me and I feel like everyone either gets it during the flowering stage because everyone thinks that by lowering your lights and giving your plants more light penetration it's going to somehow increase your yield and the second way is when people grow intense. Yes I said it okay. It always gets hot in a tent unless you know how to properly vent let your tent. Let me know in the comments below if you've fallen under one of these two traps. You might think you know how to ventilate your tent, but that's why we came out with this video because I can almost guarantee you don't. If like you're trying to orchestrate or engineer this big thing on how to ventilate, trust me, you're not doing it right. For the longest time, I've always thought that your light should be around 18 inches away from the top of your plant because that's what a lot of light companies recommended, but the reason they recommend that is because now all right, this is just my theory, but I think that these light companies recommend 18 inches because it's gonna make their par readings look a little bit better. I mean, of course you're gonna have a stronger par reading 18 inches away as opposed to like 24 inches away. And yes, I get it. Some companies do recommend the 24 inches and they show the par reading for the 24 inches, but I see a lot of 18 inch recommendations and it's always been like that for me. It's been like that for the longest time based on like all the different readings from the different companies that I've seen, like even from the blurple days to now. It's kind of like when nutrient companies come out with their feeding schedules. They try to push it to the limit, but anyway, that's not the point that we're trying to make. The point that I'm trying to make here is when your lights are too close, I will tell you right now that it's gonna be counterproductive for the same reason why people think that it's productive. People think that more light penetration equals bigger flowers, bigger yields, bigger harvests, and that's just not true. Like it is true, like the concept of it is true, but what we're talking about here is not true. It's no secret that flower density is important to us growers. I mean, is it not important to you, right? We can deny that, oh, you know, it's not that important, but let's be real here. Everybody likes dense flowers. I know you do, you guys do, right? I mean, I hope you do. Me personally, I love dropping my nugs into my sea vaults, like the ones that you see behind me over there and just hear like a boom, just like a straight up thud. <laughs> and there was one run back in 2019 or 2020. I don't remember, maybe it was like 2019. I was running that blue cheese. And if you long time OGs remember when we did the blue cheese run, drop it in the comments below. This is at a time where we actually had grow vlogs. Anyway, I didn't care at all about the blue cheese. Like, I just kind of, I don't know, I just kind of grew it. It was an extra plant that I wanted to grow, and it was around 25 inches away from the light. I figured, you know what? If it did well, it did well. I wasn't really caring about it because all my other plants were already taller, so I had to lift the light away from that 18 inch mark, and then that's when I kind of didn't really care about the blue cheese. I was like, they'll just deal with it, you know what I mean? It was probably, I'm gonna tell you right now, it was probably one of the densest flowers that I ever grew, and then it got me thinking that, you know, what? Wow. It's not about having the lights super close. It's about having them right where they're comfortable at. So that way they can focus on flowering production and not repairing themselves. That's what happens when you experiment different things. Your thinking process starts to slowly change. You develop this different mindset as a grower or a cultivator. And you know, that's, that's how you progress as a grower, even just your mindset. Maybe it's not about the different formulas that you're using. Maybe it's not about this nutrient line or that nutrient line or that soil or that light company, but maybe it's about the mindset. Obviously, when you alter your mindset, you're gonna be using a lot of different techniques, but that's where it always starts with your mindset. Now, a lot of my grows prior to that, uh, you know, some were pretty hard rock, you know, a lot of them were still kind of airy, and I was always wondering, what's going on here? Why are my flowers so airy? What's going on? And it wasn't until that blue cheese run, I'm like, you know what? Wow, maybe if I lift the light up, I'm not getting that heat stress. My plants aren't focusing on repairing themselves, and they're focusing on getting that density. Honestly, every run since then, after my 24 inch rule, unless you're running like the ES 300s, then I run it about 28 inches because those lights are crazy powerful. Point I'm trying to make is, ever since that run, 
my flowers have been super dense. Sorry guys, you know, that was a pretty long story, but you know, since we're talking about heat stress, I figured that it was important for me to tell you guys that story because the point of it was that if you can dial in your lights exactly where they need to be and not try to get them as close as possible, you're already winning, you're already halfway home. One of the biggest signs that you even have heat stress is when your leaves start to curl upward. They're most likely gonna look really dry and crispy, you know, like Pringles. Then you're gonna start seeing some brown spots and weird shapes along the edges of your leaves. You might even get some yellow discoloration, but it's not gonna look like a natural fade. Like, you'll know there's definitely something wrong. Like, it's almost gonna look like a combination of a zinc deficiency and a phosphorus deficiency. It's gonna look really close to a phosphorus deficiency, but when the leaves curl upward, you see what I'm saying? There are different signs that like make you eliminate, okay, so it's not gonna be phosphorus deficiency because that's not what usually happens, you know, the leaves curling upward. You know what, it's gotta be heat stress. So you gotta look at every single sign and if one thing contradicts deficiency that you think whatever that is, that's how the process of elimination starts. Obviously, you're gonna know there's something definitely wrong. Everybody puts their fans in their grow space that's a given and I'm not telling you that's gonna be what fixes your heat issue if you're in a tent when you're in a tent put a box fan in front of the bottom ventilation holes on the outside of your tent but facing as if you're blowing inside of your tent you don't have to have a box fan on every single ventilation hole I know it's gonna be the next question you guys ask you just have to focus on one ventilation hole at the bottom of your tent whatever room that your tent is in all right make sure that the room you're working with is pretty cool like cool as in temperature not like cool rad bro make sure that you have an air conditioner or just make sure that your room is cool so that way you can put that box fan to push that colder air into your tent but it's not going to be overbearing at the same time this is obviously not going to work if you're in a warmer room than the temperature you're trying to get you're trying to push cold air and not warmer air let's just say that your ac unit is running don't automatically assume that you know your tent is going to automatically be nice and cool if you don't have a way of blowing that air into your tent then your tent environment it's still gonna be trash make sure that you put the box fan the box fan is key to this whole thing so make sure you put your box fan in front of the bottom ventilation hole like it doesn't matter I'm not gonna say ventilation holes because that would you know all, you all of a sudden think that I'm talking about the three ventilation holes just put a box fan in front of just one ventilation hole on the outside don't put the box fan at full strength obviously you're gonna get wind burn there is such a thing as wind burn you know it definitely exists and you don't want that either you know your leaves are going to end up looking like an upside down canoe is probably the best way I could even describe it you just want to blow some cold air into your tent without making your plants feel like they're in a wind tunnel or one of Oklahoma's finest tornadoes of your choice it also goes without saying to have an exhaust system you're not only trying to mask your smell but you're also trying to push that warm air out of your tent because as you know heat does rise so you know, you know this is like science 101 here when you have a box fan pushing cold air in you can use that exhaust system to pull the warm air out from the top so you got that cold air coming from the bottom heat's gonna rise it's gonna the air is gonna automatically become warmer from your lights that exhaust system just gonna push it right out lots of people like to do this I personally don't but you can also run your daytime hours at night and this is something that makes the most sense if you're running an indoor setup where you don't have central air central AC or anything like that and if you have central AC and you're growing in a room that is probably gonna be the I mean the best possible situation that you can be in because you can always regulate what you want your room to be and in my last run we had the temps at 73 degrees probably the entire way through but that's also because we are lucky enough to have central AC here I can't stress it enough consistency in your environment is super important probably one of the most important things when it comes to your entire grow all the way through think about it this way right your plants being in the wild I've pretend they're being in the wildlife. Now your outdoor environment is pretty much going to stay the same in most cases and I know there are going to be some people that have crazy weather changes but for the most part your temperature is on the daily it's going to fluctuate super crazy especially right now growing in northeast who the heck is growing outside right now right it's super cold it's 30 degrees one day 70 degrees another day but we're not talking about the spring we're talking about mostly the summer think about it most of your summer days I mean it's it's pretty consistent it depends on where you are but I can only strictly talk about the Northeast in the summers 
our summers are just, you know, once you get like into June, you know, June, July, August, even September, it just stays hot. It stays kind of the same temperature. Your highs are pretty much the same. Your lows are pretty much the same. Very close, you know, let's not nitpick here, all right? I know someone in the comments is gonna be like, oh no, man, you know what you're talking about, you know, weather fluctuates all the time. Again, I get it, sometimes it does, but for the most part, not really. The point I'm trying to make is your outdoor temperatures for the most part is pretty stable in the wildlife. So you're trying to emulate that on the inside. So I know I feel like I've been kind of jumping around in this video, but there's just so much information when it comes to heat stress and it's so important to deal with your environment. I hope you guys like the tip about the air ventilation, you know, putting the box fan in front of the outside. When I did that, I felt like I broke new ground. I feel like I just figured something out that was the next best thing since sliced bread. I mean, obviously not, but in my head, that's what it was. All right, guys, so I feel like we covered a good amount of stuff about heat stress. If there's something that you want to add, drop it in the comments below. Also, before I do forget, we're going to be running an ILGM giveaway on 420. So in the pin message below, make sure that you expand it because you might not be able to see the entire pin message. We're going to have the link. It's going to be like a Google Docs link kind of thing. Make sure you click that, fill it out. Don't fill it out more than once. They have a way to figure it out if you submitted the form like twice or multiple times. So just fill it out once. Don't get yourself disqualified for dumb stuff. We're going to be giving away a whole bunch of stuff. First place winner is going to win $420 worth of ILGM bean vouchers and two winners are going to win $170 bean vouchers. So fill that out. We're going to be posting the winners on the community section of the channel on 420. So make sure you keep up on that. All right, guys. So before we close off today's video, I want to thank everyone on screen who's been supporting us on Patreon. I really appreciate the love and support. So I'm going to close out today's video. Be sure to drop a fat thumbs up, drop that fat like and subscribe for more content. And I'll catch you in the next one. And as always, stay safe. Peace.